right. much memory you got. I bought an 8 gig card. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go through the same thing. Thanks for coming. Yep. I'm going to go through the same thing here, and this is, uh, a, I'm going to okay, call it a pre-teach, a basic skill of the transformation matrix. Uh, and I will let you know that all these things have been around forever. They go away, they come back. This is huge. I would call it big and huge. And it is for moving things around different coordinate systems. It will be in any survey book. It will be in any animation book, any gaming book, uh, any book dealing with spatial relationships. And so we'll first introduce you. We're going to be dealing with the Cartesian coordinate system invented by Descartes. And basically in the Cartesian coordinate systems, you thought about it in the old days as ordered pairs, it's ordered triads, X, Y, and Z, with the definition of X being one direction. You picture X, you picture Z, and the Y is where your finger goes. So X is your pointer, your Y, your thumb goes through Y, and Z is where your, I'm sorry, X, Z, Y is where it goes. So we're going to go with this right now, X and Z and Y goes into the board. Getting used to sticking these coordinate systems up here, the Kelvin, what is the temperature is in Kelvin, the pressure is going to be in maybe PSF or in Pascals, all these different datums. But let's look at how we really write a point in mathematics. A point in this plane, call that P1, is really not a point mathematically, it is the end of a vector, the radial vector. That point is not a point, never was. We treat it as such. It is the end of a vector. Get that picture in your head. No matter how that point comes is collected, it is the end of a vector, of the radial vector, the position vector from some known or assumed datum. All right, so let's visualize that, but if we have that point, right, maybe we have point one, maybe we have point two, maybe we have point three, maybe we have point four. If we go with the concept of points, lines, and then polygons, lines or, and points have, the, the vector has a direction. So from P1 to P2 is one vector, from P2 to P1 is a different vector, from P2 to P4 is one vector, from P4 to P2 is the opposite of that vector, and the like. And as you go dealing with both 2D and 3D shapes, you will see there is something when you're going to do either the concept of transformation, rotation, shearing, shearing. All of these things are going to be done through transformation matrices. So we're going to go back to this original point here. We'll erase out the other ones and realize that in the end, this is the basis of everything we do. And let's say we want to just translate this, translate this point about from this point to someplace else. So let's assume right now that this point has a x of... 10, a Z of 10, and a Y of 0. That is how you write the vector for that point. Soon you will see that you will then tend to add a placeholder down here, which in the past we would have maybe called time. Really, time's got to go farther down. This is just a placeholder. And now let's say that we want to translate this point. We want to move it maybe 10 in the x and minus 20 in the z and even bring it out of the board by 5. How do we go about doing that? Well, we do this. We multiply it by the transformation matrix times the matrix that describes the point and we get the transformate, we get the point, I'm sorry, transformed. The transformation matrix looks like this. Put it in your head, think of the logic, and we'll play with it on and on in programs like MeshLab, in your math book, in AutoCAD, in SketchUp, on the board, in your calculator, because it is the crux of mastering not only 2D,
but 3D work, like that fly is doing. Here's how we do it. We're going to first learn that there's something called the identity matrix in a 3x3 three three system. This is going to be a 4x4 four four matrix. But the identity matrix looks like this. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. We are then going to stack or just put in some placeholders down in the bottom. Sometimes they're ones, sometimes they're zeros. I believe we stack them up with zeros, zeros, zeros. And we put one here. That's going to be for scale. You'll see sometimes, depending on what you're doing, you may be actually stacking this side and putting the, the transformation or the, the transformation matrix or, or data right here. Now, transformations are not just translation, but if you're going to be putting translation like we want to do here, we wanted to change that. We want to translate it 10 in the X, 5 in the Y, and minus 20 in the Z. So we want to do a transformation matrix that looks something like that, or transformation function looks something like that. Well, what do we do? We just place that here, that 10. We place the 5 and the minus 20, and then we multiply the transformation matrix times the point or set of points, 10, 0, 10, and 1. How do you do it? Realistically, you do it with a program. But you want it, as you get towards math, you want to be able to go ahead and actually do the math and understand multiplication of matrices, and you do it by like this, picking this up, and laying this across. And so you're going to kind of take this, lay it across, multiply this times that, plus this times that, plus this times that, plus this times that, and put the number in the top row. And that will be, if you look at it, it's going to be 20. 10 times 1 is 10, 0 times 0 is 0, 10 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 10 is 20. You do the same thing again. This is going to turn out to be 5. Do the same thing again. This is going to turn out to be minus 10, and then you're back to, if you do the same thing again, you're back to the 1 here, the placeholder. Now, what you did, you can look at it again. We'll visualize it in a second, but for the most part, just knowing that you hold in these original 3x3, three three, does the scale in different directions, potentially, X, Y, and Z, and it does rotation about the X, Y, and Z axis. If you're going to be not changing the Z, in other words, yaw, you're going to keep these the same. If you're not going to be changing the X, which is called, we call pitch, you keep these three the same. If you're not going to be changing the Y, which we call roll, you change, you leave these three intact. But for now, all we're looking at this, is this concept that if when we're doing translations, translations through a transformation matrix, it is not an additive process. It is a matrix multiplication. In that lies some keys to really looking at and being more efficient in anything we do that has to do with vectors. Thanks for listening.